Gentlemen, how are you doing today? Fantastic, sir. Good to see you. Doing Good great, you. sir. Great to see you as well, Dr. Wiegert. This is our very first time speaking, so um, it's a pleasure to be on board with you and a pleasure to be a part of the up-level community and to get to know you uh, as I've gotten to know your four children so far. Well, very good. Yeah, it's my pleasure too. And I've heard some of the podcasts that you've done with uh, others and you've done a great job. So I'm honored to be part of this one. Well, thank you. It's definitely a, uh, a learning process involved there. I'm uh, learning a lot about myself through the process of doing it and uh, trying to be a little bit more patient in my speech, a little bit more organized in my thoughts. So some great um, up-level lessons that are getting applied to uh, just that level, just that experience in my life right now. Well, you hit on a really cool key because uh, where where we are with up level it's it's not so much about the business it's what we learn about ourselves and what we help other people learn about themselves in the process so welcome to the team thank you thank you it's a pleasure to be aboard sir now mr sam Wiegert, uh what's been going on with you how's everything going from the ceo level you know i want i want to say this uh first i know that you've you've also started to do some podcasts big shout out to you for the podcast that you have done mr guyton but then also you've uh You've started to do some, some podcasts uh, on a little bit more regular basis now too, right? Adding in some of the tips that you're talking about. Yeah, and we can um, go into a little bit about that. But what I was thinking about is since the state of the community seems to be something that, you know, is always changing and is very organic right now, maybe once a month we could just at the beginning of the month, like the first, first week, that could be like the state of the community. I love that. Uh, you and any guests that you want on, uh, myself, just kind of talk about how things are going. Um, then of course the other week two could be a, an interview week three. I could try to cut my teeth and a little bit more practice on doing, um, doing solo thing, solo episodes with small little things like time management or, um, any topics that come to mind or that are, you know, timely, but not, maybe not dated. And, and then of course the last one in the week could be another get to know somebody inside the community. And as I've said before, my goal with this is that we get to meet quite a few people and not just one town or one family or anything like that. But, you know, we take a whole sprinkling and cross section of the entire Uplevel community and even some people outside. Great. So in short, make sure you're subscribed to the Uplevel podcast anywhere there's podcasts, right? And so jump yeah. on the bandwagon. Absolutely. Love that. Yeah. Thanks for your work. Thank you. Let's 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 dive into it. We'll just share a little bit. I think, um, you know, I've I've asked I've asked our team to to share a little bit this last week about certain fears and like what comes up during this time, and just realizing the power of as an organization or as a CEO or just, um, yeah, I guess anybody, just the power of actually sharing your fears uh, and talking it through with someone. You know, it's it's interesting. One of my dear dear friends. Um, just lost his son to a suspected suicide. I'm actually at his house right now. And um, what was cool, we were just talking about it. We were just saying like, hey, like no one really would have guessed that, that he would have done this, right? And it's just interesting because I feel like it's sometimes the people that talk the least uh, that sometimes harbor the most of it inside of them. So we've kind of been on this kick in, in up level and, and even my wife and I got on the community page yesterday and just shared how important we think it is to be really transparent about your fears, how important we really think it is, especially during this time, to be transparent about things that are happening. And for up level, it's like just like any other small business. It's, you know, I think we're all worried we're worried about the economy, worried about, you know, will things pick back up? How will we reopen? How how will we reopen? Will we reopen? Uh, right. you know, at every at every location? Like is is it, are people gonna come back in and buy martial arts and and so those are some of the things that my, our team is working on and, and we're working on it really hard and Dr. Weaker's been a huge part of it. So as far as state of the community, I mean, it's, uh, it's been a really, really fascinating time, a really interesting time. And I, I do, I agree with Dr. Weaker. He said it earlier, like we're learning a lot about ourselves and um, what do they say? What's the, what's the saying? Like, um, you know, you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice and, and you, you get to know what you're made of uh, when you are squeezed. And so I think for a lot of people in the world right now, that's a big, it's, this, this is the time you get to, you're getting to find out like what you're made of and, and what's coming out during difficult times. And I've been really happy with some of the stuff that's come out uh, in our team and I've been really, and in myself, and I've been really unhappy 
with some of the stuff that's come out, right? I'm a, I, I fight a little bit more, I spar a little bit more, I maybe post a couple of things uh, on Facebook that I shouldn't post, but what, you know, I, I get into it sometimes. Um, I'll blame my dad for that. My dad was always a outside of the box thinker. So I'm just trying to continue the legacy. All right, nothing wrong <laughs> with being passionate about what you do by, by any means. Well, just to, if I could pick up a little bit on the fear situation, uh, your listeners might know or maybe not that I have eight children. And out of those eight children, five of them actually make their living, their, their family makes their living from martial arts. And four of those are with up-level martial arts. And so when I started thinking through what this, uh, this pandemic was going to look like in terms of, oh, no contact. Okay. Oh, they're shutting down all the businesses. Okay. Uh, and we can't be close to each other, right? And I'm just thinking about this contact sport known as uh, martial arts, thinking, okay, what's the future? What's the future like? Uh, but when I, I put it into a higher level perspective and think about a dream that Mr. Wiegert has had for quite some time, which is to take this thing we call the up-level method, or we're, we're kind of maybe reframing it as the black belt journey, which to me is like a fascinating concept. Um, the idea that, that every individual on the face of this earth is on a hero's journey. And some people don't realize they're on a hero's journey, but everybody is, and, and, to, and to couch life in terms of, of a hero's journey or a black belt journey, and to start talking about, listen, they're really, you're not gonna be made into a hero until you slay the dragon, right? We all have dragons, we all have obstacles, and right now, every single person on this planet, with the exception of Mr. Bezos, I heard today that he was gonna be the world's first trillionaire, but with a few exceptions, most of us are wrestling with fears. We're wrestling with anxiety, with uncertainty, a lot more uncertainty than the world had before this, you know? And I've just seen uh, Mr. Wiegert and his staff rise to the occasion and put together something that we've been dreaming about for a long time, which is to take this up-level method and, and what, what up-level offers to the world. And what are we doing? We're, we're putting that together now in the form of an online program. And like, you know, people say, you can't do martial arts online. Come on, get real. Uh, no, we can. It's an outrageous idea, but sometimes the most outrageous ideas are the ones that really take root and we're really hoping to make that happen mr guyton and i think in future podcasts your listeners will will be hearing some things that uh i think will just be really encouragement to them because we want to be encouragement to the world really we have a lot to offer and i think that there's there's some things going on right now that uh, are going to put up level in a in a new position uh in the world itself and excited about that really exciting i think that the excitement then kind of overcomes the fear as I said, I think in a, in a Facebook post, what I do when I'm yes. fearful is that, listen, there's some things I can take action on, right? There's some things I can do. I can't fix COVID-19. I can't do that. I can't fix the economy, but I can do something, you know? I can plant a garden. I, I can get my concealed carry permit. I can, I can learn ham radio license, which is something I'm doing. I can, I can feed into Uplevel and start helping them move this program online, you know? And so to me, that's very satisfying. Or you could start a podcast. <laughs> There you go, absolutely. Or, yeah. I was gonna say, or you can train martial arts no matter where you are in the world right now. Like that's, right? Yeah, it it's is cool. Absolutely. We did have, we, we did have somebody uh, tune in. We had, we had our first student from Alaska uh, was tuning in to take class, which was really cool. Uh, we've had uh, Lakewood, Colorado uh, tuned in. These are just some names I was spouting. These are some towns I was spouting off in the last uh, filming we did for classes. So I'm remembering these. We had someone from, uh, I think it was San Francisco, California. So, so yeah, that's the, that's, that is the excitement piece of what we get to do. Yeah, it's been phenomenal to watch from a participant um, viewpoint, you know, you guys, how you've been able to do this and even you've modified it at, le at least once uh, from the way you started, you know, seven or eight weeks ago. And uh, from a particip participant level, uh, it's been pretty seamless, at least from the outside, outside looking in. Uh, I've had zero qualms about anything that's been going on. And in fact, I think in some ways, as I was telling you the last time we spoke via the phone, that the community is actually getting closer and closer together. You see a lot more interaction on the Facebook page. Yes. And, um, you know, there's even been some challenges. Like one night I got challenged to a plank off, you know, <laughs> nice. inside the uh, Charlottesville private group. I got, we were, some of the fellow students and I were seeing who could plank the longest. And uh, for a record, I got three and a half minutes, and I beat Mr. William Wiegert. Nice. Oh, snap. Went public with that, Mr. <laughs> William Wiegert. Yeah, wow. I think, though, Mr. Funk, uh, Mr. Funk, that's uh, a student, him and his family here in Charlottesville, uh, he posted a screenshot of his five-minute plank. So he is 
the current planking king. <laughs> All right. So if you're listening to this, then uh, five minutes is the time to beat. Post your times below. <laughs> Gauntlet is down. Yeah, you know, one of the things I want to say, I've been, we've been really excited. First of all, I had this thought. We, we got a call. Um, this, you know, we, we got a call from, from our good friend kind of hearing about this situation where I, I mentioned earlier where I am right now. And it really inspired me just to, you know, and I've, got a, I've got a staff meeting tomorrow and I haven't shared this even with the staff yet, but I guess this will come out after this meeting. Um, we're going to open. Like we're going to open in some shape, man, safely in, in some way. You know, and we're in three different states right now. So there's different regulations for every state that we're in. And we're looking into those really heavily. But we're looking into basically doing whatever we have to do um, to say, I don't care if we have to open, have classes 10 feet apart in the parking lot. But I just, you know, I just realized how important it is that people are moving, how important it is that there's some sort of interaction, how important it is that we are, we are continuing to reach our goals, that we're not just sitting we're not just sitting doing nothing and, and, and you know, it's just, it, it just, that just adds to the stress that we're all feeling. And so, you know, I think Uplevel is a huge way to combat that. We're going to look at everything we possibly can to open as soon as humanly possible, no matter if we have to have classes in the parking lot, no matter if we have to, uh, you know, we've already been going to people's houses and having mini classes out in their front yard. Like, we'll do whatever it takes. Um, but I'm going to share with my, my staff tomorrow, like we're, we're, we got to open it, it's time. It's time to do that. And, and in some way, shape or fashion. Yeah. Uh, back to the online classes. I've actually really enjoyed that. And I've, I'm at the point now where I need to log on to the blackbeltleader.com website and claim my membership there. Yay. Cool. Start getting the, uh, the curriculum that way. And just, that's really cool to know that I have a private little portal that I can log into and get some extra curriculum. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, and we took, we took that a step further, actually. Uh, we, we took it a step further. We actually used to have all of our curriculum on YouTube. It was, it was just out there. Uh, we, we wanted to keep it a little bit more private for our students. And, and so we actually ended up taking it all off of YouTube. All of our curriculum, whether it's universals, whether it's sparring combos, it, tips, tricks on how to do stuff, all of that is in the new online membership portal that we've put together. And uh, we're really excited about that. That gives a little bit more of an exclusive feel. All the manuals will be in there. So anything that you would have you know, gotten in paper will be on the membership portal as well. And we're, we're using this time, you know, I've been asking myself a question, you know, how, how amidst all of the fear, I, I'm trying to get that out. And one of my ways for getting that out, like we talked about, is just sharing that with people. So I think that's a, an action item that we're encouraging all of our students to do is wh whatever they're feeling on the inside. And it's just like having somebody to talk to is so, so, so important. And, um, but uh, one of the things that we're excited about is now that all of the schools are teaching the same curriculum and are on the exact same rotation, we want to create a, 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 an experience in the brick and mortar schools where the instructors at the brick and mortar schools actually get to spend more time with their students. So one of the things that we've been experimenting with, I want to just follow me on this for a second. One of the things that we've been experimenting with is what does it look like to have a, to, to get some of the curriculum from the video feed, you know, um, we're uh, Mr. Guyton. You don't, I don't know if you know this yet, but we we um, we contact we contracted with Crutchfield to install a 150 inch uh, TV screen uh, on the uh, on one of the Charlottesville walls. Nice. Uh, actually, it's going to be at the end. Yeah, which is like a huge screen. It'll be the biggest screen ever. And um, we've got a really so, so we're going to experiment with what it looks like to get some of the content that we're putting through via video and allow the instructors to actually be with the, inst the students more, allowing them to talk a little bit less, be able to correct a little bit more, be a little bit more hands on with the students, obviously, once that's safe and, 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 and we can do that, but be able to just be a little bit more present with their students. So it's something we're really excited about. And we're just going to experiment. We're going to see if it works. We're going to see how the community uh, adapts to it. And and, but we think we can do a really great job of creating an experience and actually giving the, the instructors that are on the floor, they don't have to talk as much, but they can actually be with the students more. It's something we're, we're going to try. Very cool. Yeah, that multimedia experience. Uh, I know that the, the schools have actually ramped up the multimedia, but this will take it to another level. And I could get really excited about that as well. And uh, what that does is that'll, that allows us the opportunity to open up clubs. And, and other schools and other locations because the, kind of the master teacher would be uh, coming from a feed and we could use CIT students, we could use others actually be part of helping the individuals, giving them that hands-on attention that's gonna take them to the next level, probably even faster than they would be if they 
had to get the feedback from the, the, the same person that's actually doing the teaching. So I got, I got to give it to Mr. Wigan on his innovation on that one. And, and of course, COVID-19, Here's here is a crisis, but you know, embedded in every crisis is, is op our opportunities. And I really want to encourage our listeners that, listen, what, what's, the, what's the opportunity for you? Yes, it's a crisis. Yes, Love you that. might be able to work. You know, wh where is the opportunity that resides within that crisis? Step into it, lean into it. As, as Tony Robbins says, dance with your fears. And, and let's, let's take this to the next level. Let's, let's come out to the other side of this thing and look around and say, hey, we're better off now than we were in many respects. We might not be a bit better as good off financially as we were, but listen, we might be healthier. We, we might be closer together as a family. We might be more sensitive to the need for community. We might be more sensitive to the need of people around us. You know, uh, Mr. Weger shared that a close friend has a suicide in his family. My wife and I had a very dear friend uh, two weeks ago who committed suicide as well. So like, it's like, I gotta be more sensitive to people's pain. You know, there, there's a lot of pain in this world today and, and we've got to be sensitive and we've got to be part of that community and, and articulate our fears like Mr. Weger was talking about. So it, it's, it's an exciting time, a challenging time, but an opportunity to up level, which is what we're trying to do and trying to be a leader in that. Fantastic. Beautiful, Fantastic. well said, sir. Well, that, that's this idea, that's this idea of, and I think it's important that people, uh, people understand that that's the mission. You, you know, someone, someone told me the other day that they made a mention that, uh, you know, we shouldn't be trying to sell anything during this time and, 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 and uh, that, that, you know, it makes us look like we're money driven. And, and I, I, I really had to sit with that for a second because it kind of hit me hard because, but I had to sit with that for a second. And I, I kind of searched my heart. I was like, man, is this like, is this money driven? And, and I keep coming back to, you know, when I was young, I was so excited just to start a business. And, and yes, it was. I was like, I can make money in a business doing something I love. Like, that's awesome. But, but every day and every year that goes by, you know, I, I feel like it's, tr it's transitioned from me. And I feel like a little bit more every day for my team, it's going from, okay, it, it's a business to make money to it's a mission. And it's going from, from, from profit to, to, to a purpose. And I, Dr. Wigan, I feel like these things that have happened in, to us, the suicide that you just mentioned and the one that just happened in my life are all drivers for us to create this idea of becoming a modern day black belt. And like, what is a modern day black belt? Well, they communicate their fears. What is a modern day black belt? They, Mr. Guyton, to your point, like they, they start stuff, they step out on a limb, they live, they, they live their life on the edge, they push their comfort zone. All of these ideas are driving us. And, and yes, you need money to make that happen. And, and we're going to like use that to the, you know, I, I shared a, a message with my staff the other day. Someone was getting honest for, for doing uh, uh, belt giveaways. And I said, guys, look, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a time for us to use every resource we possibly have to reach as many people uh, with martial arts and with this idea of what it takes to become a modern day black belt. And uh, so I just want the listeners to understand too, like, that's our heart. That's our mission. And um, everybody who's kept their memberships active during this time, who's continued to buy private lessons packages, like, who's continued to like support our organization, like, huge thank you. That's uh, supporting what we're doing. And and um, hopefully people feel that from us. Yeah, I mean, definitely we've got to, we've got to keep moving on. We've got to adapt and we've got to um, make the most of the situation. And like Dr. Wiegert was saying, you know, the in currency that comes out of it might not be monetary. It might be a better, stronger, tighter community. And that's one of the things that I think makes up level unique is it's not just a karate school. It's, got marketability behind it so that it's not just some dude pulling up as i said one podcast in a you know old chevy nova and pulling out a gear a bag in a rented school gymnasium you know you guys have an extraordinary product and it's just getting better and better each and every day and uh anything that seems to get thrown your y'all's way or our way since i'm in the community uh, you guys seem to adapt and modify and overcome it very quickly very swiftly with a vengeance in a good way. That's being a modern day black belt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Cool. So I was hoping from, from that that maybe we could segue into a little bit of uh, some marketing that you guys have been doing and how we are standing out there out in the field that is a little bit different from anybody else that you might see. You know, it's, it's, go, go for it. Take it, Dr. Wigan. I'll, 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 I'll go after 
Yeah, one of the things that that uh, I was uh, writing in some of our, our ad copy is that the up-level program is not for everyone. Um, we really believe that that families can train together, and we really want uh, as many parents as possible who can be involved. Now, I understand there are some parents who couldn't possibly be involved, but I think one of the things that, that I look back upon upon our raising of our of our children is that we stuck together as a family, and we really would encourage families to to make up level martial arts a family activity. Now, this doesn't mean that a student, a mother who's got two jobs and raising a baby or whatever, can't put their 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 son or daughter into up level martial arts. But to the extent that we can have families participate, we want we want families who are committed to that because they're the ones that are going to stay. Uh, it, it's not easy to earn a black belt. The black belt journey is not an easy journey. If it if it was, everybody be doing it. Everybody be walking around with black belts or be an eagle scout. That's not the way life happens, right? And so we, we really are are we're, we're not trying to you know, not trying to sugarcoat this thing. It's a journey. It's a pathway. It's, it's, it takes diligence and perseverance and a lot of hard work to actually make it to black belt rank. And so the people that we're looking for are people who have what it takes to be committed and to make this uh, a journey for themselves as well. So when you talk about the marketing side of it, that was the first thought that comes to mind. And I hope that didn't come across as being unkind or uncharitable. Everybody's got their unique situations. But for someone just like, oh man, I can get an easy black belt and so forth. It's like, no, no, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. And they're not the people that we're, we're looking to, to serve in this thing. You agree with that, Mr. Wigert? Yeah, I, I think you, I'm actually glad you took that question because I, I feel like uh, Dr. Wigert is an amazing writer for the record. And he's been doing a, a lot of our ad copy and writing a lot of that. He's doing a great job with it. And so I'm, I think that you appropriately answered that question. And I just, with, you know, it's a vision of ours that someone could learn a lot of the things that we teach the Black Belt and be in a different state and be far away from us. And then maybe show up at one of our testing centers to test, or, you know, maybe once they get to the advanced belt ranks, they have to come and be in person. We're, we're, we're working that out right now. We're literally trying to find out how someone in Alaska could get a Black Belt. Uh, with up level martial arts, without a brick and mortar school close to them. So those are like like challenges and things that we're trying to hash out. Um, yeah, Dr. Wiegert, it was so cool. Like I tell people the story all the time of you getting your black belt, not at the same time as me, but like soon after me and just the bond I feel like we have because of that and our family that did it. And yeah, the family that kicks, the family that kicks together sticks together. It's true. Uh, and yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if, if it's just, oh, I want my kid to have an activity, go. I don't want to be involved at all. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not in it to support them. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, that's, like we, want, we want people that are engaged and, and willing to work hard and willing to put in the work. Awesome. The family that sticks together, or kicks together, sticks together. I haven't yeah. heard that. There's variations, you know, if you spar together too. Uh -huh. sparring and, and uh, board breaking is good is good marriage counseling for the couples that are in our classes as well ah. <laughs> I want to make... say this I want to say this I'm not sure if this is a good segue or not but we are really excited uh, about our first ever ever virtual graduation that's where I was just going um, to ask we'll have several hundred people testing uh, but virtually for the first time ever on March I'm sorry what is it that's not March it's May May, May 23rd. 23rd yes sir thank you sir so that's an exciting moment too. And I just want yeah. to encourage everyone to be on and make sure that they're training and still reaching their goals and going after their goals. And, and uh, they're, they're graduating on March, um, March, May, whatever the month is. It yeah, all runs May 23rd? together. Right yeah, that's, that's going to be the official halfway point for me. I'll get my black with white stripe. So uh, assuming, assuming I can get my green stripe for escaping a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Good. Well, uh, let's go back to marketability a little bit. And I think you told me it once you're reading sure. the book uh, by Seth Godin, uh, Purple Cow. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I've actually been asking our whole team to read it. And uh, a purple cow is obviously a, a, a cow that stands out. And his, his whole analogy in the beginning of this book, it's a great book on marketability. If anybody's reading this and has a business or is in marketing, like just a great book to read. Uh, and one of the classics for sure. Um, but he starts off with saying like, cows are boring. Like you see, especially if you're driving along the highway and you see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cows. But imagine if you, could, if you saw a purple cow. If you saw a purple cow, that would be remarkable. 
that would be outstanding. Uh, so he says, he says a purple cow would be uh, remarkable. That would be amazing if you could see a purple cow. And he, um, in essence, and Dr. Weedle, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on the book as well, but the biggest thing I've picked up from it is being safe is the most risky thing that you could possibly do. Being risky is the safest thing that you could possibly do. And he's talking about that in terms of marketing. So he says, you should invest all your time, your energy in investing in the new, the innovative, the, the risky ideas. And so I've been asking, I'd love, I think a lot of the people that listen to these podcasts or that watch these videos are a part of our community. And I would just love for our whole community to get behind this idea of what does the most innovative, the most purple cow of, of the martial arts industry, <laughs> bringing all our animals into this podcast today. <laughs> um, what, does the, what does the most innovative martial arts school look like? And, and I'd love if our whole community was behind helping us innovate. You know, for us, it's how do we create an experience? You know, there's this word called edutainment, which is like where you're getting educated on martial arts, but you're also getting entertained and it's fun. We've been trying to do that with some of the videos, but what else can we do? Um, so that if someone were to walk into our martial arts school, it's 100% different than any other martial arts school. It's different. It's, um, it's edgy. It's, um, it stands out like a purple cow. That's the point. Doctor, we go over to, over to you for your thoughts on that. That was kind of my initial. The, the purple cow concept is like, what's the most outrageous thing that you could do that would uh, serve people's needs? And you're not being outrageous or edgy for the sake of just attracting attention. But uh, ordinary doesn't sell today. I think looking at it purely from a marketing standpoint, ordinary is ordinary. And I think from the very beginning, when I, when I started looking at what Mr. Wiegert's team was doing, the up-level team was doing in terms of making up-level martial arts almost a personal development platform based on martial arts rather than a pure martial arts program, I thought, okay, this is a little bit different. This is a way, and when you look at the graduates, when you look at the students, who at one time in their lives could possibly look you in the eye. They could shake your hand with a firm handshake. They, they could do anything. They could talk publicly. They could, they could make a public speech, right? And you see these black belts giving a speech at the end of the, at the graduation ceremony. You see them grabbing your hand and shaking it, which might be out, outdated anymore, <laughs> and, and looking you square in the eye and say, hello, Mr. Wigan, how are you doing today? You know, and it's like, okay, this person's been transformed. And, and it was the platform and it was a role model and it was the, the methodology uh, and, and everything that was going on during, during the, 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 the pathway, the journey to Black Belt that actually made this person who he or she was. And I think the role models, which was so important when we were raising our kids, you know, they, they, they had role models who took them farther than anything I could possibly do as a parent. When they were 12, 13, and 14 years old, I, I didn't turn them over completely to other men the boys, for example, but they had other men in their lives that were speaking into their lives, that were role modeling for them, giving them experiences that I couldn't possibly do. And that's something that's happening within the up-level community. And to me, that's edgy. To me, that's, that's out there. That's just not going, you know, and spending 20 years to get a black belt and mastering a particular form, okay? There's more to it than that. So maybe that's kind of, that's kind of my concept of the purple cow, at least as far as what, what we're doing in up-level martial arts. Um, and having those strong role models that I see in the up-level community for the younger crowd and just the ideology that I've seen, you know, there's no telling how I would have been in my life had I had that kind of uh, strong structure in there and strong role models. I had great role models. Um, my mom is a tremendous lady, but I did a couple of years ago uh, when I was working with some different blogs and thinking about some different things. I actually made a list of like 10 things. This was even before I became a father. Um, like it was you know, 10 characteristics of a modern gentleman and father. And I'll go through that list in, in another episode that I've been thinking about. And you're welcome to be on it, Dr. Wiegert, if you'd like uh, to go through those mm, points and you. kind of expand on, but it was essentially, you know, strong moral character, um, getting involved in the community and, um, you know, having a acknowledgement of a higher being and so on. But, uh, you know, I won't get into it, but it's, what's really been fun 
were interesting for me to watch just as a 47 year old middle-aged man coming in and taking these uh, martial arts classes from, you know, someone that I'm old enough to be his father, honestly, you know, um, it's, it's been interesting to be a part of it because a lot of the stuff that you're teaching is things I've known, but I've never really put into practice as much as I possibly should have. So for, to see the young people, Mr. Weiger, Mr. William Weiger, uh, Mr. Tim Weiger, Mr. Donald Bushy, and everyone that's in an instructor level. Heck, even uh, Miss Bailey, who's a CIT student, I think she's 18 years old. I look up to her, <laughs> you know, because they've got good, strong characters, and that's what I want for my son: is to grow up in a in a world and in a community that has positive role models. So it's not just you know like hey, let's go camping and somebody's grabbed a pack of smokes and stole some beer from daddy's fridge or something like that. Okay. Well said. Yeah, I, I, like, the, age. I, I like the idea in a post-COVID world where even as I heard on the radio today that uh, maybe shaking hands is kind of going by the wayside. Uh, well, uh, in martial arts, we bow. We don't even have contact. We can just bow. And maybe wouldn't it be cool to have a society where people show that respect to one another? Uh, when, when they meet one another and so forth. I think this whole concept of, of, of respect is kind of woven through martial arts down through its history. Uh, and you see that kind of demonstrated in, uh, in up level at, at the times of whenever we meet as a staff, when we meet as uh, students and, and teachers, you know, there's this show of respect for one another, you know, and, and you said, Mr. Guyton, that you, you'd respect this 18 year old. Now you have something to teach her from your life experience. She has something to teach you, of course, from her martial arts experience. It's a respect that goes both directions. And to me, that's, that's part of what we need in our world today. Beautiful. Thank you. That's well said. Well said. See, Mr. Guyton, I, I, told, I told you he gets his own, he, he, uh, he needs his own episode. We've been talking about Dr. Yeah. Meeker getting on for us. That would be beautiful. I'd love to get, uh, I know that the community, I've heard it said several times because your name's come up, has come up a few times as I've spoken with people. Um, Francy Bowl brought you up, Ms. Chavez brought you up, um, and I know that at one point you were going to do a parenting workshop along with your wife um, in, in one of the like weekend classes, and I know that I've just heard the, the chatter inside the classrooms or inside the studios of people going like, oh my God, how did, I would love to pick their brains or know what the secret sauce of the Weigert family is uh, to have that strong moral and just ethical uprightness that you guys have. And, uh, you know, as a, as a father of a six-year-old son, you know, I, I definitely want to raise him in a good path so that when he does become a man, um, that he is already on the right path and he doesn't have to come back from, you know, some misled journey. I believe, sir, that you're on the right path. It's your, your son's in, mar in the uh, in, in up level, right? Our, in, my entire family is signed up. Um, we don't okay. go, he does, he and my wife don't get to as many classes as I do. They haven't embraced it as much, but I'm hoping in time that he'll realize uh, the true value in it. Uh, right now, I think he's just a little headstrong as I was when I was six years old. Um, I, you mm -hmm. know, never was one that, um, I don't want to say, I was never one that embraced the mentor, student, uh, coach, whatever. It was always, you got to defy the system. <laughs> and it's only been in recent years that I'm like, hey, maybe somebody knew what they were talking about. <laughs> so we, we try to have good open conversations just sitting down every night and uh, we eat dinner as a family every night and we talk about how the day went and things that are bothering him and things like that. So I'm hoping one day it clicks. So the short answer is my son is signed up, but he doesn't actively participate in the up-level community, but uh, in time, I hope he does. Right. I'm sure that, I, I'm sure his future is very bright. And I think that, um, you know, the one concept that comes to my mind is that until COVID, our students were spending a majority of their waking hours with their peers in the same age group, right? And then if you take the time that they're not eating or sleeping, a good part of that time could also be either with peers in person or with their, their, their age group online, right? And I think what the up-level method includes is this age segregation 
where you've got a whole range of, of people learning together, growing together, part of the same community. And you just made a perfect point, Scott, and that is the idea that you have an 18 year old in your community who's a CIT student whom you look up to, right? And, and she's gonna look up to you because you're, you're persevering and you're making progress. And so again, this is whole idea that, as you just said, you know, you didn't have a whole lot of appreciation for what the, the next generation could show you, but in, in up-level martial arts, we're looking down and seeing what the, the younger people can teach us. We're looking up to see what those further along in their life journey, as well as further along in their martial arts journey can teach us, whether it's, hey, I'm going to show you how to do that, t that kick better, or uh, let me show you a little bit about, you know, um, my life as a, as a father, you know, and, and uh, we had the opportunity down in Charlotte a while back just to take a young man under our wing and go out to eat with him and, and uh, just share part of our journey with him and just kind of touch his life in a special way. And I see that happening all the time in up level community, online and in present and real, real time too. Dr. Weger crushed it. That was all oh, that's really great stuff. All right, well, let's have some closing thoughts then. Cool. All right. So with the podcast, is there anything going on that you like um, or don't like? Any kind of tips or anything that um, you want me to go? I will say, you know, I, creating content on your own is very difficult. Like when you're having a conversation, it's easy. Mm -hmm. But sitting mm -hmm. there trying to just do a recording on your own, it's kind of, uh, kind of a little bit intimidating. So uh, I don't know if you listened to the last one. Uh, not very many people did, but that was one I kind of struggled with and kind of threw out there just to throw it out there to kind of get over that fear and to, uh, hey man it's not going to be polished up bright and pretty every time but uh that's yeah. the reason that was the reasoning behind that man it's such an encour you're, you're such an encouragement though to so many during this time i think just um you know my wife wrote that a spoken word a long time ago that really touched our community we played it at the beginning of classes a while back it's on our youtube channel as well it's called uh, courage over fear and it's just a spoken word with a beautiful video along with it and she thinks she's a terrible writer, but what, what, I, what, what is so interesting is that some people's greatest fears are 100% are wrapped around their greatest gifts. And so I keep telling her, you know, that there's that little saying that goes, uh, you should write for the trash. You know, if you just write for the trash, at least, to, you know, you write within your mind, you're just going to throw it away or you record within your mind. It's not, but, but the fact that you're just, you're doing it right, like is, is, is the valuable part. So I've been encouraging my wife to do that. And I think that's what you're saying is like, I'm just getting it out there. I'm doing it, you know, and I love that. Yeah. You got to be brave enough to stink at something new, right? I love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go first and, and uh, maybe, maybe Dr. Weger can put a ball, Mr. Guide, if you have any closing thoughts and I'd love for Dr. Weger to put a ball on it. Uh, Big thank you to, to, to all of our community for everything that they've been doing to support us during this time. And thank you for the opportunity to continue to support you and your family. If you're listening to this during this time as well, um, continue to be safe. And we look forward to seeing you back in class before, before too long. <laughs> and I think my, my encouragement is uh, um, for every one of the listeners to, to take advantage of this opportunity to up-level their lives. You, maybe you're not a part of up-level, maybe you're not a paying student, that's all right. Um, the journey is upward and onward. Um, the good book says the way of life winds upward for the wise and we want to be keep moving upward, you know? Keep moving, uh, stay healthy, stay active, uh, stay together as a family and use this opportunity to, to grow and learn in ways that you wouldn't uh, if we hadn't been going through this. Perfect, and as always, I think we should all stay the course and press on for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you, gentlemen, so much for taking time out of your day um, or your evening, I should say. Uh, please stay safe out there. Keep, follow your social distancing <laughs> rules and, uh, you know, just be safe. Thank you, Mr. Guy. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks, Dr. Weger. Thank you, Dr. Weger. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, Bye -bye. beautiful job, guys. Thank you.